environment, man. And that's the thing. It's not even, for me. It's, it's not only just about bringing in God, it's about bringing in the, the spirituality. Tagging in that. Listen, th there's something about that, the voice and everything, and just the song, the lyrics and everything. Like it, it's, it, there's something about it. It just makes you feel good. You know what I mean? It has an impact on you, and it gives you that feeling in the heart that you guys know. You can't explain it. You don't know what it is. It's not the brain. It's, it, it's in here. It's in the heart. It's the soul. Man, it's the heart, it's the soul, it's the spirit, and that's what we got to bring back into this country. That's what we have to bring back into the West Coast, and that's what we have that a lot of people on the far left or even the far right don't understand. We have something that we're fighting for that we love so much. It's what Kyle talked about. We love freedom so much that we're willing to die for it. I know, and that's why they try to keep us out of Berkeley, but we will never stop. They think they can threaten us. They threaten Tiny, well, kind of, and his family. They, they use violence April 15th, okay? They do all this stuff and they think they can scare us away. But what they don't understand is that we're willing, we're, we're seriously willing to die for this country. And I know Antifa and the communists aren't, because they're scared. They're so afraid of even being doxxed. They don't even want to show their faces out here. We'll come out here with our faces. We don't care if you're going to dox us, show our faces. We love this country so much. And it's because of moments like that. And that's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Do I need it? No, no, I don't. I don't need it. Uh, so my name's Rio Gavis. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. So talk about me. Veterans, talk about veterans. It's Veterans Day. I just realized we've been doing this for a year. Not all of us necessarily, but this has been going on for a year. I think the really tip-off point was in San Jose last year when Trump did his rally. Peaceful people left the rally and got the shit kicked out of them. Two months later, we show up at Berkeley. Burton, Milo just wants to speak. Instead, people get the shit kicked out of them. Kyle stands up for us. We all unite behind this idea, well not idea, but this truth that people have the right to go out in public and express themselves, talk about freedom, or whatever they want to talk about without the fear of being docs, getting the shit kicked out of them, beaten up, or set on flame like I was. And I might say some things that you guys might not like, but we're gonna do this anyway. I was born in Lawton, Oklahoma but raised in Greenville, Mississippi. As early as 1995, the last I remember, we still had sundown signs existing in that city. Do y'all know what sundown signs are? No. The sundown sign is a sign that tells black folk to get your ass back in the house before the sunset. That shit existed as early as 1995 in Greenville, Mississippi. There's probably signs still sitting around there right now. I went to two schools named after Robert E. Lee. When I was four, the actual Klan marched down my street on horseback. I didn't know what they were at the time, but I remember my, my aunt, who was raising me at the time, went and got her pistol and stood at the front door waiting for some shit to happen. <laughs> I'm all, you know, we're living in Oklahoma and then coming out here, you know, people have called me the N word, coon, monkey, all kinds of shit. I'm telling you this because I've been around all sorts of like bigotry and racism and all sorts of dumb shit all the time. So, when I, when, I, when I see these red hats, oddly enough, I feel the sense of safety around you guys. Because not too long ago, prior to Milo being here, I made the same assumption that everyone else does. That anybody who proudly walks around with an American flag, wears a MAGA hat, or is slightly right of Bernie Sanders, must be a fascist, must be a Nazi, must be a Klan member, or must be racist and hate black people. And it wasn't until I came to hear Milo speak where I met a lot of people in MAGA hats and MAGA shirts and we just had conversations because that's what I came to do is listen. And none of them hated black people. They just wanted to like come out and listen. And to this day, I've yet to meet a racist. Oddly enough. And I'm looking for him, believe me. I'm looking for one of y'all to say something stupid, but it hasn't happened yet and I don't see it happening ever. Yet I still hear the constant nar narrative you know that guy, so that guy's a racist. Why do you spend time with him? You know that guy, he's a Klan member, he's a Nazi, and it's stupid. But that is the terminology and that is the that is the, the weapon that they use against you as a group. That's the only thing they have because they can't battle you on logic. They can't battle you on ideology, which is really normal to me. You know, a lot of us talk about immigration. I support immigration, legal immigration. Why? Because when illegals come here, they affect black people far more than other folks. We're the ones that have to give up the jobs and the affordable housing. So when I hear black people, you know, if I meet black people who don't support legal immigration or say that they want immigrants to come in, I'm like, wait, wait, we're the ones that suffer first. 
And after being part of these marches and these events and these groups and whatnot for the past year, one thing has stayed constant, especially with Antifa and the violent left or the extreme left. And this is where I might upset you, but being black, I love the teachings of Martin Luther King. They're, they're, they're inspiring, they're, they're the words to live by, but I also abide by the teachings of Louis Farrakhan. A lot of y'all might not know a lot about him, he doesn't get talked about as much, because Louis Farrakhan would tell us, yo, Martin Luther King says turn the other cheek, but when you run out of cheeks, you need to sock somebody back. And, and that's, that's a reality for a lot of us. And one thing that Louis Farrakhan said was, do not trust the white liberal. Now, mm -hmm. that's not all white people, <laughs> but I've noticed as I go to these events, the ones in the front lines screaming Black Lives Matter, calling us Nazis, <laughs> Klan members, racists, are white people. <laughs> and they use people of color and the, 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 the causes that we champion as a shield to bring about their own cause, which is usually some form of communism, or violence that they want to, you know, or anarchy in the streets. And they use us to do it. Uh, and they use you as some sort of symbolism of nefariousness and evilness. And I'm here to tell you, like, yo, y'all aren't evil. White people aren't evil. None of us are evil. But yeah. that's what they keep putting out there. It's okay to be white. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and it's okay to be Sorry. black. And yes, black lives do matter. Blue lives matter. Yes, white lives matter. Unfortunately, y'all can't say that because it sounds really bad. I'll but say I understand. It. I'll say it. But I understand. <laughs> and I'm glad things are toning down. I'm glad we're getting to this point where we can come out 50, 60, you know, strong and not have a huge contingency of people throwing Molotov cocktails at us. Uh, the days of us fighting hopefully are over with. And one thing I want to mention is when I come out with you guys, Y'all know why. Lefty-leaning liberal centrists. Practically the wolf in sheep's clothing among you guys. That's something else Louis Farrakhan talked about. Beware the wolf in sheep's clothing. And that's he's referring to white liberals. The fox can get close to the lamb because the lamb does not see him as a threat. He sees the wolf as a threat, but not the fox. But the fox will end up eating the lamb anyway if he gets hungry enough. And that is what I see from Antifa, that is what I see from the extreme left and the violent left, is that they sneak in and as they, they rile up the crowd and tell them, yo, we need to fight these people, we need to fight these people, and they send us out, black folk, as their foot soldiers, we're the first ones to get arrested, right? We're the first ones to go down while they sit back and do press conferences the next day talking about, oh no, that was just a few people who were violent. On this very spot right here is where Yvette Tvalaka sat there and said, everyone, no, no, why are you guys focusing on the violence? It was very peaceful. You guys just focusing on the violence. She's the one who told her foot soldiers to go out there and beat the shit out of a lot of people of us who were actually there. So, I'm stumbling because I know what I want to say, but I'm gonna get it out. I'm so happy. You know, sometimes I question myself, am I really a patriot or am I really just seriously against Antifa? And, <laughs> And we're all patriots at some point. One day a year at least, we all get, you know, we all love Veterans Day. Some of us don't, but you know, fuck those dudes. <laughs> but I'm learning day and day goes by. I don't talk about Trump much because I don't care much about him. Not because I hate the guy, but I just don't think about it that much because in four years, he will be gone, or eight years, he will be gone. But one day that regime will change. And the same way as we had eight years of Obama, in eight years of Bush, in eight years of Clinton and, and Nixon and Reagan and further down the line, I've seen this ebb and flow every time a regime changes. The media as a whole tends to paint conservatives uh, and Republicans as evil and bad, and they focus on all the negative attention, and when a, a Democrat or a liberal is in office, they, they go completely the other end and ignore the crashing of you know, the housing market, they ignore you know, scandal after scandal, and the reason I mention this is, it doesn't matter who's in office, especially in the federal government, this, how we, how we, the perspective that we have of our leaders, you know, are mostly dependent, you know, on how the media pretends to portray them. I'm glad right now that Donald Trump is exposing them for what they really are. 
I'm, I'm so happy that we're pulling away from mainstream media sources such as CNN, MSN, and the rest of those, and going towards you know more ground level, like live streaming. If you want to know the truth, find a Periscope stream. If you want to know what's really happening, go to a blog. Um, kind of in the middle now. And, and again, you know, I say this because we talk about Make America Great Again. And a lot of people say it was never great, or it was at one point, and it is or it isn't. What we're doing right now are the seeds that need to be planted to make that happen. Because again, one day, Trump will not be here anymore. And it's great that we're riling around something, you know, that we see as positive, but what will we do past that point? What will we do in four years or eight years? You know, can we continue this movement, you know, that uh, builds up everybody? And I, I think that's something we all need to think about ahead of time. Uh, what's next? And I, I think the steps that we're doing right now, putting our safety and our lives on the line just to come out and remind people that freedom is for everybody is a step in the right direction. That's all I got. Thank you, bro. Yeah! Thanks, guys.